Hello again and welcome back. This is an extension to the anti Benko Benoni Patsa Trap, and this is the red herring. And apologies if you hear background noises, but it's my out of control son Liam who is popping balloons with my dog Oscar the Bedling Bedlington Terrier in celebration of the end of the school year. But back to the red herring after d4, knight f6, c4. Black tries c5, inviting the Benoni. White can play d5 and gain space, in which case black will go for Benoni or a Benko Gambit maybe. But also natural and simple is knight f3 developing. After takes takes, black gains time on the knight with e5. Knight b5, another natural move for black, striking at the center with d5. After c takes d5, we saw in uh, the previous video, the Patsa Trap, that obviously black cannot take on d5 with a knight, because after queen takes on d5, queen takes d5, knight c7 check is winning for white. So instead of knight taking on d5, what black tries bishop c5, putting the bishop on a very active diagonal. Logical for white now is d6, holding on to the d-pawn and threatening to invade on c7. Here, interestingly enough, the best move is just to let black invade on c7. Since after castles, if black or if white tries knight c7, then black counters with knight e4. That's hitting f2 with a mate threat. White will defend with e3. But black now plays bishop b4 check, and if a move like bishop d2, we're going to have a trade on d2, knight takes d2, knight takes d2, queen takes d6, hitting the knight, knight takes a8, and rook d8 is fantastic for black. But after the move d6 by white here, a more direct approach by Black, although slightly inferior, is knight e4, allowing the knight c7 invasion check. Because obviously after knight c7, black will sacrifice the queen. Queen takes on c7. And after d takes c7, bishop takes f2 is checkmate. So this has been the red her herring trap in the whatever opening it is, type of English. I believe, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.